Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you being here. So why don't you tell me a little bit about, you know, who you are, where you're coming from, how we got connected in the first sure. place, but really appreciate it and happy to be doing this. Yeah. Thanks, Tony. It's nice to be here. Uh, I'm Michael Marion. I'm a senior vice president with uh, Cressa. We're a uh, national commercial real estate firm based here in Chicago. Uh, we are unique in that we are tenant rep only. Uh, we're a privately held firm. Uh, we are, my dad was a, a military guy. I grew up in DC and, and, uh, he loved his analogies. And I would say, we're, you know, you, you have these other companies that are the big brokerage firms that are more the, the battalion or the, the cavalry, so to speak. And we're more the SEAL team. We're, we're you know, going after some high value targets, not everything, not trying to check the box of quantity, uh, just making sure that we work with folks that, uh, that we can service, uh, service extremely well. Um, so I enjoy that. And, and, uh, it's been nice to connect with you both through real estate and, uh, and our, our alma mater, uh, Notre Dame. Um, you know, I, in the last, uh, couple of years, uh, I have started to, um, most of my practice has been representing companies with their office space needs, uh, as Chicago has worked to become, uh, you know, more significant on the life sciences, uh, in the life sciences arena. Uh, at the behest of our uh, Boston offices and Bay Area offices who do a lot in the life sciences world, I've started to play around in that arena uh, and have met some some good folks and and really gotten excited about the the future of of life sciences here in Chicago. That's awesome. I think, yeah, when we met through Notre Dame, obviously it's like Notre Dame connection is great. You know, I roll for all the non-domers out there. <laughs> but then secondly, you know, you let me dust off a little bit of my real estate experience in, in New York City, working with developers and working on um, more of the residential side, but dabbling in some of the, the commercial spaces. And then the, the kind of the, the no brainer then was the life science space. Um, because my life science background being in healthcare and then seeing kind of the, um, the demand that they're trying to bring to life sciences in Chicago, especially on the developer side and the deal flow that's coming through. Why don't we talk a little bit about that? Because I think that that's really not a today, but where it's going to be. And uh, that's why I think it was really cool to be in here to talk to you about that today. No, thanks. I, you know, it is, it's, uh, I said for a, for a non native Chicagoan, I've become quite a homer. Uh, anything that can help uh, Chicago, uh, help our communities, all of our communities um, to, uh, you know, really to grow, to, to spread, uh, spread wealth, uh, to spread equity and equality, I think is important. And this is a, uh, you know, this is a vertical that uh, can not only do that, but can make sure that, uh, you know, people of, uh, you know, in every part of our city uh, get access to, to quality health care. And so when I define uh, life sciences, real estate, you know, life sciences is really anything that can produce a better health outcome. So whether that's, you know, hardcore science beakers and, um, you know, in the lab or whether it's therapeutics or whether it is health tech, I think those are all things that are involved in, uh, in life sciences. Chicago has the fundamental kind of the basics for what, if we look at a Boston and a Bay area, uh, areas that are mature life science markets that have been very successful in creating a, an economy within the economy. Um, what they have is uh, a talented labor pool. Um, uh, you know, I'd say we have a, a better, more affordable cost of living. We have great research universities within 250 miles. I think we have 12 um, research universities. We've got um, Argoni and Fermilab here. So um, a lot of the makeup uh, that I think we need developers, Trammell Crows, Sterling Bays of the world have gotten on board. They've seen the, um, you know, the potential for this and have begun to construct buildings, um, you know, both in Fulton markets and Lincoln yards. We've got other projects that are looking at the old Michael Reese site. Uh, we've got the Illinois medical district that's been in existence for a long time. We have a lot of, uh, real estate now, uh, or under construction to meet the needs and the demand. The problem is we, we have those two things. We sort of have the, you know, step one and step three, what we need is step two, which is we need further investment, heavy VC investment, uh, in the life sciences community here in Chicago. And I think, unfortunately, that's where we, we come up a little bit short right now. Yeah, I would say amen to that. Um, certainly I know from my background being in the life science space, 
there's so much interest to diversify from, you know, East coast, West coast, you know, everyone thinks of, okay, I'm in biotech, I'm in life sciences and they think San Fran or they think Boston, you know, Boston's got the manufacturing hubs of Thermo Fisher scientific, Boston scientific of the world. So being close to the manufacturers for that really specialized innovative equipment needs that's there. And then you've got the research and university uh, scholastic component on, on the West coast and the Bay area. But with that comes really expensive real estate. And being a New Yorker myself and you being an East Coaster, we all can understand how, as a young company, how difficult that must be. Um, but particularly in today's economy as well, you know, now investors are starting to become more risk averse. And I think what's really um, hopeful is that there is the interest because you've got the developers building, hoping that there is going to be that interest to come and fill kind of these vacancies that they're seeing. And there's incredible real estate. I mean, when I came to your office at, at 167 Green, I was blown away by, by what was there because I hadn't been out in that space in a while. And just standing there and looking at from the West to go see what's in West Loop going up is just incredible. And I think Chicago really provides that affordability that kind of quality of life that people are looking to, because obviously COVID has changed the way that we all kind of perceive the live work play of our lives. And, and I think it's really important to, for companies, especially young biotech companies and life sciences to consider the, as a recruiting aspect for sure. And I also think that people don't really, if you're not from Chicago or you're not in the healthcare space, you don't understand how good the healthcare is here. Right. And, and, the, and the relationships with the university-based healthcare, the research-based science. And, and so I think there's a lot of opportunity, but to bring those people here, you need the deal flow and, and the VC money to come with it. So I'm very optimistic about that. Um, let's talk a little bit though about how on the tenant rep side, you know, every life science kind of build out and, and need is very different. Um, you know, obviously we've had a laboratory in Bozeman, Montana. So there's not a lot of new development space that's spec'd out for our needs. But even as a, just a, a diagnostic laboratory, our needs are very specific to what we do and the physicians and the clients we serve. So talk about kind of maybe the value add prop of being on the tenant rep side. When someone comes to you and says, hey, Michael, I need a space. And what do you got for me in Chicago? It's an, it's an interesting uh, coming from the office world where you, you sort of have the same issue, but the cost is about a third of what it is. If you need a lab build out, you know, somebody comes to you and says, I, you know, I, I want to engage my workers more. I have a young workforce. I want them to come into the office more. What is, what does this need to look like? How do I, how do I best support, uh, you know, my business, um, through the, through the office space, you know, not, not terribly glamorous, uh, but very functional, especially post COVID it's, it's become an issue that is, uh, extremely important to folks when you have these specific needs for uh, a build out that will, uh, accommodate a very specific, um, you know, kind of research, uh, agenda. Uh, I think you do need a, you know, obviously a very specialized build out. What is exceptionally challenging, I think in that space is, you can build out kind of a model home office suite and say, oh, we're going to have a couple of offices and a, a couple of workstations and a conference room and this and that. And that, that'll work for most folks. You can kind of mold your way in. Um, it's still expensive to do, uh, to spec that out with no commitments. Um, but but you can do it and it, it seems to work fairly well. You cannot do that with lab office or it's, it's very difficult to do because the needs are so specified. Uh, you know, you have a normal office build out that's maybe, you know, maybe $100, $125 a square foot. You have lab office build outs that are closer to $300, $350 a foot. And you can't spec that out because you have a good chance that somebody comes in and says, okay, it's not exactly what we want. Uh, I, you know, we, we need to modify it and then you're in more than three in the quarter, three and a quarter. Yeah. That's definitely interesting. Cause it's, it's like built to spec seems great. Cause you, you think, oh, we got turnkey, it's ready to go. But on the flip side, you've got a lot of really unique needs. And I think what's really great about Crescent, what you're doing as the tenant rep is you guys understand the value too, of what life sciences means today, because it's no longer Bunsen burners and beakers exclusively, right? It's collaboration spaces and data center heavy. And so you're, what you're seeing in the modern day life science space is what resembles more of a, a, a high tech office space with some sort of life science component. So I think there's a lot of value into that perspective and, and your ability to sell both sides of those deals, because that's really where, where it's going. No, it's, it's a good point, Tony. And it's one of the reasons that I came to Cressa is our sort of unbiased view. We, 
we don't do, uh, we don't represent any developers. All these new, uh, new properties that are going up, the conversions uh, of, of office into lab office, um, we don't represent any of those developers. So we're not steering anyone that we represent to one of those to say, you need to go here. We'll kind of fit the square peg in the round hole. But, um, you know, our company, you know, our brokerage firm is going to benefit if we fill up this space. So let's push everybody here. Uh, we really are kind of an unbiased advocate. It's one of the things that I like of same thing when you just go to traditional office, uh, office tenant representation, but that's nice to have. And it's, it's good as a tenant rep to help, I think kind of guide these companies as they're coming out of, I mean, my God, I've seen some of the um, laboratories at the universities where these folks have been for, <laughs> for, for years, some decades. And, you know, I, I think it's become sort of almost normalized for them to be used to working in very kind of not glamorous conditions. Whereas I think in the office market, people expect, uh, you know, the foosball tables and everything else. Uh, what we've been able to really educate some of the, uh, you know, some of these kind of, they call them, this is a, a John Flavin thing, but lab rats who, you know, you want to become unicorns, these folks that are scientists who are also entrepreneurs. And they say, I don't want to just have great science. I want to, I want to create a great business and a, and a successful commercial venture. That takes a emerging of not just uh, the right equipment to uh, to conduct you know conduct the experiments and, and conduct the trials and conduct everything else you have to do, but it's also a place that will draw in folks who have some uh, some real business acumen and sort of merge those two. We've seen a couple groups. Eva Zine is a great example of a group that their office uh, in Lincoln Park is kind of half split between this is the business side uh, and and this is more the uh, the lab R and D side. Uh, and there's an area in the middle where their folks are constantly collaborating. I think they're a great example, uh, of a company that is, is kind of embracing it. And we, we, you know, we've been able to help folks find space that, uh, that does both that it grows the science and it grows the business. Well, and I think most importantly, even from the tenant perspective, but to the VCs, they need to understand that Chicago and what they're trying to accomplish in the life science space is a very, very attractive proposition for VC money. Because now you have the affordability, so to speak, you know, relatively speaking to the West Coast, East Coast, the San Fran's and the Boston's of the world, you got better affordability. So better bang for their buck in the facilities that they're building, better quality of life for recruiting. But then also that you have the shareholder value that you're trying to create long term, because as I'm putting my money in as a VC, I want to look at and say, OK, are they not only doing great work, but is this something that's marketable? Mm -hmm. Because retail investors have become so active in the marketplace. So when you see these spaces, that's kind of the expe expectations that they see. And it it's probably has to do a lot with TV and movies because I've been in the lab space for five, going on six years now. And you're very, very spot on by saying these are not the lab spaces that people expect. You know, traditionally, even in the best hospitals in the country, it's a space in the basement. Right. You know, and it's, it's kind of tucked away and that's where they're used to doing their research and in, in their understudy, undergrad studies and PhDs. And then you get to the hospitals and nothing really changes. Right. So I think that is a very important point to make to the VCs when they're considering Chicago as an option to invest and to promote biotech and life sciences is this really is kind of the culmination of the best value and, and also that quality of life aspect and then the facility side of it. So it's a really interesting culmination to see how that all comes together. I agree. And I think one of the, one of the things that Chicago still needs to work on is letting the VC community that for, you know, as far as we can tell lab and uh, life science investment comes from predominantly VCs that are based on the coasts. And so I think encouraging them to see what we have created here in Chicago, see that we're, you know, we're not still working out of the basement. Uh, we've created facilities that, uh, you know, if they support, they're going to be able to build, uh, build these businesses. I, I think that's one of our, one of Chicago's biggest shortcomings is, is really sort of letting people know that we're in the game. Um, and, and part of that is, and I think, uh, Michelle, Dr. Michelle Hoffman with, uh, Chicago bio consortium, uh, has done a really good job of starting to go to our research universities, uh, and team up with VCs and say, look, you know, you, 
the, the science that you are working on is incredibly compelling. It's commercializable, but how do you actually pitch this? How do you merge the business with the science? That's, that's what a VC is looking for. Your idea can be terrific, but if nobody can understand it, even somebody who has a decent understanding uh, of, of whatever, whether it's therapeutics or biotech or whatever it might be, um, if they don't think, you know, sometimes it's, it's the, it's the jockey as much as it is the horse. Uh, I think if you have great science, but they don't, you know, figure you have the business acumen to, to get this, or, or at least the team uh, to build that, they're not going to invest their money in it. And I think that's where we, 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 we tend to come up a little bit short right now, um, but we're working on it. I, I think we're, you know, certainly uh, at Cressa, we're planning on hosting an event uh, with CBC and some other groups, uh, including Mass Bio, uh, to, to come in in early 2023 uh, and sort of uh, host a, a, a gathering that talks about how can we make Chicago more attractive to VCs. Uh, and I, I think that's, that's really the key here. We've, we've got the science, we've got the spaces. Now we just need the, uh, we need the investment. Well, um, amen to that. And important question. Do all the life science spaces have a glass basketball court on the roof or is that just <laughs> Cress's office? Is, yeah, just, just our space for now, but they are talking about building another one with the, uh, with another, uh, basketball court in the sky, but they are, they are heavily amenitized spaces. I mean, where Portal Innovations is currently has a, a beautiful rooftop deck. Um, and again, you don't necessarily associate these amenities with, uh, you know, with hardcore science, but I, I think that's how things have evolved is I think that you, you know, again, going not to be a dead horse, but you, know, you really need to have a mix of sort of this, uh, coolness. I mean, it's, you know, I, I always go back to, you know, before they were tech entrepreneurs, the, these guys were computer nerds and there was nothing to it. It, it became, and in, in, on the coast, it's become more glamorized. I mean, these are life sciences entrepreneurs. And here in Chicago, I think there's still a disconnect between kind of the, you know, again, the lab rats and, and actually being commercially successful entrepreneurs. And, um, you know, I think it's important that we, that we continue to promote that and, and that we, and that we adapt at Chicago and, uh, you know, adapts to, um, you know, and helps these young entre, you know, these young scientists slash entrepreneurs, um, uh, become more successful. Well, I think it's great because if we can get, you know, we've got the space, we've got the, the technology and the university support, you've got the big health systems and, and the payers, you know, Blue Cross Blue Shield right here in Chicago. Um, that all supports those those ecosystems within the biotech and life sciences space. And with a little bit of investment and better deal flow, I, I really am optimistic that, you know, maybe a year or two years from now, we'll be sitting back here talking about that success story. Um, but it, there are people like yourself and, and, and us looking in the healthcare space and the construction space and, and what we're building. And I'm really optimistic. Um, I think that there's some definitely some early pioneers that are looking at that, that opportunity and we just need to kind of raise awareness and get people talking about it because there, there is a lot here that they have to offer. And, and so hopefully, like I said, we'll be here soon talking about it and, and it'll be a success story that Chicago can, can finally hang their hat on. I agree. And I'm, I'm enthusiastic about it as well. And I think we do have uh, groups like World Business Chicago uh, that are very much in the business of, of promoting Chicago as a hub for, for life sciences. Uh, I think we've got some, uh, some terrific local and you know, national developers in Sterling Bay and Trammell Crow who have put their money where their mouth is. They believe in the future of life sciences in Chicago because they're spending <laughs> tens of millions of dollars building buildings on spec uh, to accommodate the growth that we know is, is just below the surface here. And, uh, and I agree with you. I'm, I'm, I'm excited, optimistic, and enthusiastic about, uh, what this has to offer for the future for Chicago. Well, awesome, man. Well, I really appreciate the time. Appreciate you being here. Um, look forward to the next one, looking forward to seeing all the new spaces that, uh, are going to hopefully hit our skyline soon. So, uh, until next time and go Irish. Thanks very much, Tony. Go Irish.